Iran is facing a severe water crisis, and the government has turned to ambitious solutions to address it. At one point, they considered importing water from Turkmenistan's Amu Darya River, but that plan fell apart since the river is already overdrawn. Pakistan's Indus River was another option, but logistical and political challenges shut that down too. Instead of relying on foreign water sources, Iran decided to take a drastic approach, pulling hundreds of millions of gallons of water from the Persian Gulf and transporting it across the country. Iran's water crisis, a ticking time bomb. Water shortages aren't new for Iran, but the situation has worsened dramatically. The Amir Kabir Dam, which supplies water to Tehran and irrigates 123,000 acres of farmland, is running low. And Tehran isn't even in the driest part of the country. Central, southern, and southeastern regions receive as little as 0 to 10 inches of rainfall per year, making agriculture and daily life increasingly difficult. To compensate, Iran has been extracting groundwater, but this is causing devastating side effects. Excessive extraction has led to the formation of massive sinkholes, and Tehran itself is sinking at a rate of nearly 10 inches per year. The country loses an estimated 1.3 trillion gallons of groundwater annually, and about 70% of its underground reserves have already been depleted. In 2018 alone, Iran withdrew 25 trillion gallons, well beyond sustainable levels. Climate change is making things worse. Droughts are becoming more frequent, and a map of Iran's water crisis shows nearly the entire country in deep distress. Yet, despite this, Iran's population has surged from 21 million in 1960 to 90 million in 2025, putting even more strain on dwindling resources. In rural areas, entire villages are being abandoned as residents move to cities in search of better water access. This rapid urbanization is increasing demand on municipal water supplies, leaving cities struggling to provide enough for their growing populations. Failed solutions, dams and lakes drying up. Iran initially responded to the crisis by building dams, over 640 of them by the mid-2010s, with a total capacity of more than 13 trillion gallons. While they helped with irrigation and industry, they also led to declining river levels and drying lakes. A prime example is Lake Urmia. In 1984, it spanned 2,300 square miles. By 2023, it had shrunk to less than 10% of its original size. While it was a saltwater lake, its disappearance worsens Iran's climate and contributes to environmental degradation. The drying of lakes like Urmia has led to increased dust storms, reduced biodiversity, and serious public health concerns, including respiratory diseases from airborne salt and pollutants. Another example is the Zayanda Rudd River, once a lifeline for central Iran. Over the years, increased water diversion for agriculture and urban consumption has left it dry for most of the year, devastating farming communities that depend on it. The riverbed has turned into a barren wasteland, sparking protests from farmers who can no longer sustain their crops. The Persian Gulf solution, desalination and pipelines. With dams proving insufficient, Iran turned to the Persian Gulf. The challenge, salt water. The Persian Gulf has an average salinity of 1.41 to 1.45 ounces per 2.2 pounds of water, higher than the global ocean average. However, Iran found inspiration from Saudi Arabia, which successfully uses desalination to supply its people with fresh water. Iran's first large-scale desalination project begins at the Strait of Hormuz, where seawater is collected, desalinated, and transported through a 513-mile pipeline across Hormuzgan, Kerman, and Yazd provinces. This system produces 47 billion gallons of fresh water annually, with 13 billion gallons allocated for local needs and 34 billion gallons designated for industrial use. Why prioritize industry? Because these provinces host key industrial complexes like Sar Cheshme, Gol Gohar, and Kadormalu, which require massive water supplies. Without desalination, these industries would have to tap into the already scarce water used by the population, potentially triggering social unrest. The Iranian government views economic stability as a top priority, and keeping industries running ensures jobs and national revenue, even if it comes at the cost of diverting water away from household use. To expand its reach, Iran built a second pipeline with the same 47 billion gallon annual capacity. 
A third pipeline from the Gulf of Oman is in progress and will stretch even further, reaching Isfahan, one of Iran's driest regions. These projects are part of Iran's long-term strategy to establish water security through massive infrastructure investments. Iran's largest water project, a pipeline across the desert, the eastern provinces, Sistan and Balakestan, South Khorasan and Razavi Khorasan, receive as little as 2.7 inches of rain per year. In some areas, summer temperatures reach 122 degrees Fahrenheit, causing rain to evaporate almost instantly. To tackle this, Iran launched its most ambitious water project yet, an 833-mile pipeline capable of delivering 634 billion gallons of desalinated water annually. The price tag, $3.2 billion. But progress is slow. By 2023, only 12% of the pipeline was completed, and the challenging terrain of deserts and mountains is making construction even harder. However, even if the pipeline is completed, there's a concern about long-term sustainability. The energy-intensive nature of desalination and water transportation requires massive electricity consumption. Iran, which heavily relies on oil and gas, may struggle to keep these projects running efficiently as global energy markets fluctuate and sanctions limit access to modern technologies. Is desalination the right move? Some experts argue that instead of costly pipelines, Iran should focus on reducing water evaporation. The country receives about 105 trillion gallons of rainfall annually, but 70% evaporates due to a lack of proper infrastructure. Even a 1% reduction in evaporation could provide enough water to sustain small industries and communities. Potential solutions include building more reservoirs, using underground storage methods, and adopting advanced irrigation techniques to reduce water loss in agriculture. There are also concerns about desalination's environmental and economic impact. The process requires significant energy, primarily from fossil fuels, and produces brine that can harm marine ecosystems. Increased salinity in the Persian Gulf from desalination waste could disrupt aquatic life, affecting local fisheries and coastal communities. Still, Iran is pressing forward, seeing desalination as a necessary step for survival. Ancient solutions the Kanet system. Despite modern technology, Iran still relies on an ancient water management system, Kanets. Developed 2,500 years ago, these underground tunnels channel water from mountain sources to dry regions without the need for modern pumping systems. Remarkably, 15% of Iran's water supply still comes from these ancient structures. The Iranian government has launched restoration projects to revive neglected Kanets seeing them as a sustainable, low-cost method of securing water in rural areas. The future of Iran's water crisis. Iran's water crisis is dire, but the country is fighting back with a combination of ancient and modern solutions. Will desalination, pipelines, and can it be enough to prevent disaster? Or will Iran need to rethink its water strategy entirely? The coming years will determine whether these efforts can sustain a growing population and keep Iran from facing a full-scale water catastrophe.